balancing it. Hey there, it's Louie. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to crochet a birthday hat. Uh, we're gonna be learning how to make it little itty bitty, full size like this, as well as how to customize it with stripes, stars, pom poms, stuff like that. Um, okay, well, this video is especially exciting because it marks our fourth birthday for Club Crochet. Four years of making patterns, tutorials, doing live streams, building a community. Um, so from the bottom of my heart, I just want to say thank you so much to everybody that has been here uh, this whole time. And uh, this birthday is especially exciting because it actually is the first time that I've ever been able to crochet full time. If you've been a fan of this channel for a while, you'll know that while I've been making these videos, managing the website and all that fun stuff that comes with that. Uh, I've also been working a full-time job, which has been understandably pretty difficult. Uh, but with the support of everybody purchasing kits, stickers, uh, becoming a Club Crochet member, even just being subscribed and watching these videos, uh, I am finally able to take the plunge and follow my passion, something that I've been wanting to do since high school, which is a while now. Um, I can actually crochet full full time so just from the bottom of my heart thank you so much to everybody that has helped support this channel in the past and i'm very very excited to see what the future holds and now that i have the actual time to put into the crochet that i've wanted to um so yeah thank you so much uh uh, to celebrate this birthday, we're also doing a big sale. Uh, I'll put links in the description and I'll talk about it more at the end of this video when I talk about how you can help support this channel. Uh, but yeah, so look out for that. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. Uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for liking these videos, subscribing, being a member, all that fun stuff. Okay, well, without further ado, let's get hooking and talk about all the materials that you're going to need to make this party hat here. Okay, so for this pattern, you're going to need the following materials. Now, as I was saying before, we're going to be learning how to make both the small one and the big one. Now, regardless of which hat you use, I'm going to personally be using the same kind of yarn. I personally really like using worst weight yarn in 100% cotton. But you can use any kind of yarn you want. Whatever kind of yarn you do use, um, make sure that you have two different colors. You want your main color, that's going to be our red for this video, and your secondary color, which will be our yellow uh, for this video. You'll also need a crochet hook. Um, just use whatever crochet hook works best for your yarn. Because I'm using worsted weight yarn, 100% cotton, I'll be using a size G 4 millimeter crochet hook for this pattern. Uh, but like I said, whatever kind of hook works best for you. You also need a pair of scissors to cut little ends off and a darning needle to help you sew in the hard to reach spots. So for this video, we're gonna be going through the different sections of it. I'm gonna be taking it really nice and slow, one step at a time um, for our absolute beginners out there. So if you are a little frustrated, I have, uh, with how slowly I'm going, I will put time codes in the uh, description of this video so you can quickly jump to different parts of the video if you'd like to. Um, we're going to start by making a miniature hat and putting the details to that. Um, and I'll be explaining throughout how to make it larger. And then I'll explain even more so how to make it into a bigger hat afterwards um, and how to do so without even uh, having stitch markers. But we will be using stitch markers in the main part of this video. Okay, well, I think that's enough exposition. Let's just get rock and rolling and start uh, by making our hat ourselves. We're going to need our main color to start. Okay, so we're going to want to start with a magic loop. Now, if you never made the magic loop before, I do have a video tutorial that could help that I'll put right here. It'll explain two different ways that you can make a magic loop if you'd like to make a different method than we're going to be using in this video. But I'll be showing you how to make it really quick as well. Um, my favorite way to make the magic loop is to pinch the yarn in with your middle finger and thumb and go over your index finger and then back down around your middle finger and then back over like so to cross over to make a little X and then back down to make two parallel lines along the back like that. Then you wanna take this tail end, hold it down between your ring and pinky finger and close it in like that. That's gonna hold it into place. Now with your crochet hook, you want to take your, um, uh, your fingers and face it towards you like so. Take your crochet hook, go under the first bar and hook onto the second bar and then pull that second bar under the first one and then make a loop like that. Kind of like go towards you to make a little loop. Then go over that first bar, hook onto the second one. You might need your index finger to help guide the yarn onto the hook. 
and then take that yarn and hook it through the loop like so. There we go. That's gonna create a chain stitch and should lock your yarn in place. We're gonna pull it a little tighter. And now you have a loop that when you pull this tail end, it'll close it up like that. Okay, so we're gonna start this uh, pattern with round one and round one's gonna be pretty easy. Um, uh, the, the hardest part of this pattern, I think, is round like two and three. And then after that, it gets big enough where it makes it a lot easier. Um, before I get going, let's get a stitch marker prepared. Uh, I would like to use a stitch marker in this video so we can keep track of where the ends of the rounds are. And I'm going to use a, a different color, that light blue. I just need a little bit. Okay, so for round one, we're going to be doing single crochets into this magic loop and then pulling it closed. For a single crochet, we're going to go into the center of this magic loop, like so. Then we're going to hook onto the end attached to the ball of yarn. Keep a tight tension, hook onto that, and pull it under the loop. And then going over the loop, yarn over, and pull through two loops on the hook. This is going to be a single crochet, and the majority of this pattern is going to be made with a variety of single crochet stitches. For round one, we're going to do four single crochets into the center of this loop. So we want to do four of those in a row. So there's one, go under the loop, yarn over, pull through, go over, yarn over, and pull through two. There's two. And let's do, we're doing four. So go in, pull through, over, and pull through two. Try to keep your tension somewhat loose, especially for the beginning of this pattern, because we're only going to have four stitches to work into. So you want to have a little bit of flexibility for your stitches so that it's easier to work into them when we uh, come around to it for round two. Okay, so that's gonna be the end of round one. Now we can take this tail end and just pull it nice and tight and it'll close up the end like that. Okay, so next up we want to uh, get our stitch marker prepared. Um, I'm gonna try something that I don't think I've ever tried before. I'm gonna try to go through the center here and pull our stitch marker loop through that to get us prepared like that. And we're just going to work around this stitch marker as we go for each round to keep track of where the ends of the rounds are. Now later on in this video, I'll be showing you how you can crochet without using a stitch marker at all for this pattern uh, to make it a lot easier to tell where the ends of the rounds are and to make it a lot easier to make without having to like keep track of all your stitches. Okay, so that's going to be the end of round one. For round two, we're going to be working in a spiral, meaning we don't need to turn around for this entire pattern. We want to just work into the stitches that we made for uh, in the last round. So we're just gonna keep going uh, in the same direction that we were going. For round two, we're going to do a single crochet into our first stitch and then an increase into our next. An increase stitch means that we're going to put two single crochets into the same stitch. When we go into each of these stitches, we wanna make sure that we're working under both loops. So if you look at the top of your stitches here, you're gonna see a V and we wanna work under both of the loops. This uh, would be the, that would be the front loop only. And this one would be the back loop only, which is necessary for some patterns, but not this one. In this pattern, we're going to want to make sure your crochet hook is under both loops. So we're going to do a single crochet in our first one, which is gonna be this one right here, and then an increase into the next. If you have a hard time finding where the first stitch is, find your last stitch, which is the last one that you made, which will be right here where the loop is coming out, and count backwards however many stitches you had in your last round. So our last round had four, so this is where the loop is coming out. So we would want one, two, three, four, and that's gonna be our first stitch right there. So we'll take our crochet hook, get it into our loop, and we're gonna find our first stitch right here, place the hook right under the two loops, and then kind of just pry it under. I like to use like a downward pushing motion like that to make sure that I get under both those loops. So for round two, we wanna do a single crochet into our first one. So just pull a loop through and then pull a loop through two. And then we want to do an increase into the next one. So there's a first stitch. The next one's going to be right here. And we want to do an increase, which means two single crochets into the same stitch. So we yarn over, pull through, yarn over, 
and pull through two, and that's gonna be our first single crochet of our increase. For our next single crochet in our increase, you wanna go into the same stitch, look where that stitch is like kind of pulling it out. You see how there's like a little hole there? You wanna go into the same spot, yarn over and pull through, and then yarn over and pull through two for your second single crochet in your first increase. We wanna repeat that one more time. We'll do a single crochet, then an increase, and we're gonna repeat that again. We'll do a single crochet and then another increase. So single crochet into the next stitch right here. Yarn over, pull through two. And then our last increase into this last stitch right here, which means two single crochets into the same stitch. Because we're doing two increase stitches, that means that each increase is going to add one additional stitch to the uh, our stitch count. So our the, at the end of round one, we had four single crochets around, but now after do, do, doing two increases, we should have six single crochets around. Okay, and that's gonna be the end of round two. Pull our stitch marker up there. For round three, um, this is gonna be pretty easy for round three. Uh, we're just gonna be doing a single crochet into each stitch around. So we're just gonna find our first one right here. And we're just gonna do one single crochet into every stitch around and you should have six single crochets total. So if you wanna count and make sure that you are on the right stitch count, just keep crocheting around and make sure that there's six total by the time that you get back to your stitch marker at the end of this round. So that'll be, I think that's four, yeah. Five and Six. Okay, now that we're done with those first three rounds, it's going to get a lot easier just because we're going to have more room to work around. So in the beginning of this pattern, it just looks like a little knotted mess, but it gets a lot easier as you get going further and further. Now I'm going to pull my stitch marker up just a little bit. And we're going to move on to round three. I mean round uh, four. For round four, we're gonna start our repeat. Um, this is gonna be, we're gonna continually repeat two rounds, uh, two rounds, um, but slightly alter one of the two rounds every round, and that's gonna slowly increase our st stitches out so they get bigger and bigger. And you'll see what I mean uh, as we get further along, but I just wanted to say that now so you can like kind of take note of it. So for round four, we're going to do two single crochets and then an increased stitch. And we're going to repeat that two times total. So we're going to do two single crochets. We're going to go into the first one right here, going over our stitch marker. Pull loop through. Pull loop through two. There's one single crochet. Here's the next one. There's our second single crochet. And then we want to do an increase into the next one right here, which means two in the same stitch. There's one and two and then we want to repeat that process one more time so two single crochets and then an increase this is our second repeat one two and then an increase into the next which will be three and four. And this is gonna bring you up from six stitches to eight stitches. So you should have eight stitches um, by the end of round four here. For round five, we're going to just do a single crochet into each stitch around. So just like uh, the round prior to this, a single crochet into every stitch around. Nice and easy. We'll just pull our stitch marker up like so. And do a single crochet in every stitch around eight stitches total. And this is where you're going to start to see our repeat. You'll definitely see it in the next round. We're going to slowly be doing these two rounds over and over again. But every um, other round, we're going to be doing one additional single crochet between increases. So that means, well, let me finish up this round and I'll explain what that means. There's seven. This will be our 
last stitch, which will be eight. Okay, we're gonna pull our stitch marker up here. Okay, so now we are on to our sixth round and our repeating round here where you're gonna to start to see our pattern forming. We're going to do um, our round of increases. Now, in the round prior to the last round, so round in round one, two, three, in round four, we did, I think four, we did two single crochets and then an increase. Well, in this round, and, and then we did a round of just single crochets. Well, in this round, we're gonna do three single crochets and then an increase. And then you would just keep repeating that process of doing a round of single crochets after you do a round with increasing. And then the next round up would be four single crochets and then an increase. And then a round of single crochets and then five single crochets and then an increase repeated twice each time you do one of those increases rounds. Um, and that's gonna be how you slowly get it bigger and bigger. And I'll explain that again uh, after we finish our small hat. But that is the general um, process that you do to make a super big hat too. This, however, is our last round for our little tiny hat. So this is where I usually like to end it if I'm making a little itty, itty bitty uh, party hat for Amy Gurumi. So we're gonna finish up this round. I'll show you how to customize it and then I'll show you how to continually get larger and larger in your rounds after that. Um, if Again, if you want to skip ahead when we do that part, um, there will be links in the description uh, to how uh, to time codes for this video to quickly jump around. Okay, so our next round is three single crochets and then an increase. So we're going to go to our next one right here. One, and the next stitch after that. Two. and three, and then our increased stitch after that. So that's two in the same stitch. Four, and five. And we're gonna repeat that process one more time. Three single crochets and then an increase. And this should bring you up from eight stitches to 10 stitches, which is what you should have at the end of your round here. I always like to end my rounds on a round of increasing. Um, I mean, my hat's on a round of increasing. So this will be our last increase right here, which brought us up to 10 stitches around. And whenever I make a hat, I want to finish it up on our round of increasing. I don't want to do our next round where it would just be single crochets in each stitch. I want to end up on, on a round of increasing so that the end of it is a little bit further found out. If I did a round of single crochets after this, it would just be a little straighter. And we're not really looking for a straighter hat. That's kind of make, gonna make it more of like a dunce cap. And we don't really want a dunce cap, we want a party hat. So that's our last round of increasing and um, the last round for our miniature party hat before we add our details. Now again, I'll be talking about how to make it larger and larger after we do this next part where I show you details. Here we have one that I'm working on that is uh, significantly larger and I'll talk about how, you did, how I did that and then how you can continually be checking around um, for uh, so you, that you don't need to use stitch counters after that. Okay, but now let's finish up this miniature party hat. To finish up the miniature party hat, all you need to do is do a slip stitch into the next stitch right here. A slip stitch is going into the stitch, yarning over and pulling a loop through as if you're doing a single crochet, but then taking that loop and pulling it through the loop that you already currently have on your crochet hook like that. That's gonna make a slip stitch, which is it's kind of like half of a single crochet. Okay, now you wanna have a somewhat long end because we would be using this uh, to sew onto the head of a, of a little burb, for example. We'll go ahead and cut that yarn and pull it through. Um, so we would normally want this end to use to sew onto the, the head of something. Um, but before we did that, we want to, um, First off, pull out the stitch marker. So I'm just gonna pull this out and there we go. Oh, we got a little left over in there. So let's clean that up really quick. And then the next thing I wanna do is hide this tail end in. To hide the tail end, we're going to thread it onto our darning needle, just the long tail end that we need for sewing on. And we wanna hide it 
so that it mimics the ends, the, the other ends here, so that you can't really see where the end is. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in through the back of the next stitch. So not this stitch. This is the stitch that we just worked into. We want to go into the back of the next one right here, to the back of it like this. And then we want to go back in through where this loop that you went through with is coming out. So see where it's coming out of this stitch right here? You want to go back in right through there and then in through the back of a loop along the edge and then maybe one more somewhere on the inside of the hat. Let's pull that through and we're going to pull it tight enough where it mimics the top. See, so we want to make it look like one of these ones. So we're just going to pull it enough like that so that it mimics the end there. It's hard to see where the end of the round is. Okay, so that's going to be how you make the base of your miniature um, hat. Now let's, gonna, let's add some details before I explain how to make even a larger hat. So for a miniature hat, there, the details that you can do are a lot more minuscule. Like you can't really, it's really hard to do like a pom-pom, for example, because making a very tiny pom-pom is really difficult, especially without the right tools. So we're not going to be doing a pom-pom. We're not going to be doing stars. I suppose you could do stars. Um, but instead, we're going to just do a stripe and a little tiny ball at the top by making an actual little miniature ball of yarn. So we're going to take our secondary color here, get it ready. We're going to start by getting a long tail end. With like, yeah, that's probably long enough. And then we want to take your yarn, place it into your in, uh, into your palm, and just like how you're doing the magic loop, you want to hold it down like so, and we want to wrap around our index and middle finger like ten times, maybe eight times. We just want to have like a little bulk of yarn to start working around. Let's do one more. That's probably pretty good. Actually, we'll do one more just to be safe. And then we'll take it off of our fingers and we'll fold it in half like that. And then you want to go around the center of this, like this, one, two, let's do three. And then fold this in half and then go around that a few times. Let's go one, two. And then you want to just start turning it around as you wrap yarn around it to create a very tiny ball of yarn. I'm going to have to like kind of squish it so that it's more of a ball and just keep going around. We'll just kind of ignore this tail end a little bit. We'll, we're going to need it in a little bit. Let's see. That's probably actually, yeah, I like that. That's pretty good. Let's do one more around it. And then you want to get a long end and cut it. I'm gonna try not to let go of our ball of yarn so that it doesn't come unraveled. And then we wanna take this end. Well, first we're gonna take our darning needle and I'm gonna go straight through the top and come out through wherever this tail end is close. So like probably right there is where we wanna come out. So we're gonna go straight through the top of it. We're gonna go out through somewhere pretty close. And then we're gonna take this tail end and thread it on the needle and just pull it all the way through like that. Okay, now you should have a pretty sturdy little ball of yarn that shouldn't come apart because we did that little sewing in thing there. Now we want to take this and we want to sew it onto the top of our miniature hat and then add some stripes along the outside. So to do that, what we want to do is we want to start by going through and we're going to use this longer tail end first. You want to go through the top and then out through a, a, an adjacent stitch, like really anywhere that's nice and close to it, just like that. And then we want to go around the body of your hat just a few times. One, two, let's do like three. And then we'll come and go ahead and just go through the very bottom of our piece right here just somewhere along the base of your hat. And that'll create your little, um, uh, uh, like, stripes along the, along the outside. 
but these stripes might come undone. So what we want to do is we want to like hold these stripes down with the other tail end of our yarn. So we want to take this other tail end, thread it on a needle like this, and then we want to go straight through the top and then out through an adjacent stitch that's along this stripe. So we'll go through like right here. And then we want to go around the stripe and go across to another stitch that's adjacent. And we want to just continuously be going around the stripe and just pulling it almost like tight, but not too tight. So it's not like pulling the stripe in. We just want to keep the stripe in place. So we're going to go around this stripe and we'll go, let's go uh, next to this one right here. So we'll just go down a stitch a little bit go around this stripe and then we'll go across right here look along our piece here oh I should have done one on this stripe so let's go through this one here and we'll go up to tie it around to this stripe and I'm basically just like randomly going around making sure that this stripe is held down in a variety of places along the side of it we'll go through this stripe um, and actually, this will be the last part. So we'll just go through this stripe because I think it's close enough to where the tail end went through. So wherever you went through with this other tail end, you want to be, you want to end up close to it, at least like a few stitches away. See how we're only like three, four stitches away? That's probably close enough to do a double knot and it not be too like invasive towards the design. Okay, so we want to take this tail end here and we'll pull it a little bit. And then we want to take this other tail end both yellow ends and pull the second one just a little bit to tighten everything a little. Not too much, but just a bit to get it in place. And then we want to take these two tail ends and just double knot them on the inside and cut close. So we'll go one, and two for a double knot. I'll cut it nice and close here. And there we go. Now we have our little miniature party hat that we can use to sew onto our um, tinier amigurumi. And I made it so this ball is just a little loose. I really like it so it's got some give to it. They call this sympathetic motion. It's when something else moves and then the other thing moves with it. Um, so I really like it when uh, that ball has this, like a little bit of wiggle to it. All right, so that's gonna be how you make your small hat. If When you sew it on, you wanna use these two longer red tail ends or whatever your main color is to sew it on. You want the longer one to sew on all the stitches along the border and then this other tail end to go straight through the center of where the hat is and come out through an adjacent stitch and then you can double knot these two ends together to hold the hat onto place. Okay, so that's gonna be how you make a little miniature one. Now let's talk about how to make it even bigger. Okay, so like I was saying before, here is our uh, other hat that I've done where I've done a few different, few more rounds of these increases. Uh, and let me talk about exactly what I did here. So the end of our last round for our little hat is about right here, I believe. Let's see, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah, it'll be right right about here actually. So the round after your last round, our last round of our little miniature hat was only, was three single crochets and then an increase. And so you had 10 single crochets around and we ended on a round with increases in the round. So the round after that, you would do a round of just single crochets. So that would be just a single crochet into each stitch, that'd be 10. The round after that, you would do another round with increases in it, but there would be one additional single crochet between those increased stitches. So for your last round of increases, you did three single crochets and then an increase. And then you repeated that twice, that ended up at 10 stitches. But this next round of single or increases, you want to do four single crochets and then an increase. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six. And then you would repeat that once um, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and you would end up with 12 stitches around. 
and then you do another round with just single crochets in it. And you keep doing that repeat of doing like slowly increasing in each round to get it bigger and bigger and bigger and it'll keep going out, funneling out like a little cone, you know? And this is just a nice way to make a cone in general, which could be useful for making like things like uh, pointy elf ears or um, like really whatever you want. It's just the best way to make a cone. Now, I wanna show you how you can keep doing those rounds without ever needing to use a stitch marker at all. So, here I am, uh, I just finished like, I don't even know which round. Um, I think we have 18 stitches around at this point, and I just finished on a round of increases. Now the most important part for this, this um, pattern is noticing where your increased stitches are. And this is important for amigurumi in general. It's really useful to know exactly what an increased stitch looks like so you can keep track of where you're at without using a stitch marker. So let me show you. So if you look at your pattern here, or our stitches here, you're gonna be able to see some stitches that are increases and some that are not. This stitch, for example, is a single crochet. This is just a regular single crochet, one V into the stitch. Now the majority of these stitches are all gonna be single crochets. There's a single crochet, there's a single crochet, there's a single crochet. Now here is an increased stitch. And you can tell it's an increase because there's two of these Vs going into one little hole. This one's got one V going into one hole, meaning that's a single crochet, but this one's an increase because it's got two going into one spot. Now what's really cool to look at is if you do this, uh, this pattern correctly, your increases are all gonna line up together. So you can see like, here's an increase, then under it is gonna be a single crochet, and then under that it's gonna be an increase. And so they're all gonna line up together. So what's really important here is if you can tell where the increased stitches are, you can easily tell where the ends of the rounds are and where you should do a single crochet and where you should do an increase. So this round that I'm on right now is a round of just single crochet stitches. So we're just gonna single crochet all the way around but we want to still keep track of what stitches we're working into so that we know where to finish our round up. So for example, let's just crochet around and I'll show you when I get to an increase, how I can tell it's an increase. And we're just single crocheting, doodly doodly do. We're just making stitches, right? And we just want to keep track while we're going and look at whatever I'm going into. So like, this next stitch I'm going into is just a single crochet. Okay, good. That's what we want. We want to go into single crochet. Oh, wait, this next stitch here is an increased stitch, which means there's the next two stitches are going to still just be single crochet stitches. But we want to keep track to say, okay, we're going into an increased stitch right now. Boom, there's an increased stitch. That's what you or We just did a single crochet into the, an increased stitch. You want to keep track of that because that could be the end of the round. It, in our case, this is not the end of the round, but it could be. And this is how you can tell. You'll keep going around and see those increased stitches. And if I see another increased stitch as I'm going around, uh, around that stitch, that means that it's not the end of the, like it will be the end of the round. So we're gonna keep going around here. We're gonna do, just keep doing our single crochet stitches to find where the next increase is in our pattern. Do, do, do. We're just going around. A couple more. Oh, here's our next increase. See, so there's an increased stitch here. Now, when we see this other increased stitch, because we were paying attention, we know that this will be the end of our round. But let's pretend we didn't know this was the end of the round and we just thought, okay, now we're in the middle of uh, of our round. We still need to do our single crochets around. Well, that's not going to be a problem because when we get to the next part, we're going to see that we're going to do a single crochet into a single crochet stitch and not into an increase stitch, which is not right, which means we need to do another single crochet into that same stitch to make it into our next increase stitch. Does that make sense? I think that kind of makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions about this in the comments, but let's keep going and I'll uh, try to explain it as best as I can as I continue going uh, here. And um, yeah, I'm trying to do the best I can to explain this uh, in the best way possible, but I'm kind of just going off the cuff here. Okay, so we wanna just keep going around and let's pretend we think that this is the center of our round. We don't know that that's the end of our round. So we're just gonna keep going around here 
And as I'm going, I'm paying attention to not only the stitch that I'm working into, but now I'm paying attention to that stitch and the stitch under that stitch. Because if I see that either one of those is an increase, that means that I know I'm, I'm in the halfway point. So this next stitch, I look down, that's a single crochet. But then I look down further, that's an increase, which means that there should be another increase right here that's directly above it. So if you see an increase in the round below the round you're currently working on in the same stitch that you're working into, that means that you should put another increase right here. So this stitch right here should be an increase stitch. There should be two in the same spot. And there you go. Now I know that I put an increase into the, to the right spot because it lines up with the increases down. And again, we're looking at the increases. We see two Vs going into one stitch. And then this one's just a regular single crochet. There's just one V going into one stitch. Go down a couple. It's really important. And this is something that comes a lot with practice. So keep your stitch marker present um, if you're a beginner and just keep a track of this. But as you go, as you make more and more things, keep track of where your increased stitches are because it really is helpful for knowing how to crochet without a stitch marker at all. We're just going to keep going around here and find our last stitch, our last increased stitch. And again, I'm going really quick here, but I'm looking at the stitch that I'm working into. I'm working at the stitch under that stitch at the same time. So this next stitch right here, right here that I'm working into currently should be an increased stitch. I can tell because there's an increase right below it right here. So that means that this stitch right here is our final increase stitch. There's our last increase. Okay, so I think this is a pretty good size for our, our next party hat that we're making. But this time I want to add some other details to it. Something a little bit closer to the, to the stripes along the, uh, the, this larger party hat. Um, by the way, this large party hat is made by continually doing that over and over and over again. I think at the end of this round, I had like 40, maybe 50 stitches around, just increasing up two stitches every other round to just slowly get there. And eventually I got to this size. Okay, so we're on to, um, now we want to add some stripes. So what I like to do for our, our thicker stripes is, um, well, the first thing we can do is we can just uh, finish up this stitch with uh, with a slip stitch like we did for our other hat. So we're just going to do a slip stitch into the next one right here. Like that. We can cut the yarn. Again, I'll, I'll leave a long end just in case I end up deciding that I want to sew this onto the head of something. The long end like that. Thread the tail end. So we're just going to do a hidden end like we did for our small hat here. And go into the back of the next stitch. So this next stitch right here, we want to go into the back of it like that, and then down through where it's coming out right here, and then in through the back of a few stitches along the inside, just to like hide this end in so it doesn't come apart. So just a few stitches like that, pull it through. There we go. Okay, so now we have our like the cone of our party hat done. Now we want to add stripes using slip stitches around so that the stripes are a little bit thicker than our just our simple little lines for our small hat here. So we want to do a little thicker, a little bit more sturdy stripes. So we're going to grab our yellow yarn or, or whatever you are using for your secondary color. We're going to start with a slip knot. So you're going to take your yellow yarn, make a loop over itself, and then take that loop and fold that over itself like so. And then take the inside, it should look like a pretzel kind of thing here. Take the inside this loop right here and pull it through. This will make a slip knot so that when you pull this end, nothing happens. But when you pull this end, it tightens the loop. Okay, so we're going to take that off our crochet hook here. But now we have a little tiny slip knot. That's important. So now we want to take our crochet hook, go into the stitch where we did our last little slip stitch. Let's go like right, let's say like right here and just pull that slip knot through that stitch like that. Now, what we want to do is go in through the next stitch along the border right here, take this other end and slip stitch. OK, 
okay? And we're just gonna keep doing that all the way around. So we're gonna go into the next stitch right here, take our end that's attached to the ball, yarn over, and slip stitch. You can work around this tail end if you want to, to hide the end in, but it's not really too necessary as we can hide this end in later or we can double knot it to the other end of our yellow yarn once we're done with our stripes. So we're just gonna keep doing these slip stitches into both loops along the border here to create a border of yellow stitches. And then when we get to the end of this round, I'm gonna show you how to go up and keep doing this around in a spiral so that it keeps getting, you keep adding more and more stripes. Now I have a very specific way that I did this on my long hat. And at first I was a little skeptical about it, but after I'd made it, um, I really, really liked, I actually ended up really liking the design that I did to keep the, um, the stripe continuously going. So I'm gonna show you how to do that to see if that's something you'd be interested in as well. So we're coming along to the end of our stitches here. Let's go into this one here. And then now we're at the, the end of our round here. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna go in through the same stitch that I started in right here and do another slip stitch. And then I wanna go up, up around right here and do a slip stitch like that. And then I wanna go up another round. So I wanna go one more round up and do a slip stitch. Now we could just do a stripe into this round. You know, I could have just done one stitch up and then done slip stitches around the whole border. And that would make these stripes really close together to each other, which might look really, really cool. But I want my stripes to be a little bit further separated. Okay, so I want my stripes looking more like this. And you can kind of see how the rounds in between the stripes, you could do a round of stripes in between each one, and it would be very, very stripey. Now that is a process. It, it's a lot of work to do that many slip stitches, especially um, working on the inside. So I kind of like to spread it out because it's a little bit easier. Um, and I just think aesthetically, it looks a little bit cleaner. So I'm gonna do two rounds up, which is what I just did. Did our slip stitches, I'm trying to get this tail end out of the way. We did our slip stitches a couple rounds up, and we're just gonna keep going around. Now, as I'm going, I've got my finger all the way in as close as I can to where that slip stitch is. And then I'm just gonna keep going around um, horizontally. Instead of, going, um, instead of going up rounds, I'm gonna start going to the left or, or whatever, whatever way you are normally crocheting. We're just gonna keep doing our slip stitches around, going through these stitches, through the stitch, Yarning over with the end, attach the ball of yarn, pulling through. And this gets gradually more difficult as you get further along with the hat. So as I get further into the hat, it's going to be harder and harder for me to get my hand into the hat so that I can hold the yarn in place to grab for a slip stitch. Now you can um, mitigate this by going straight up all the way through the top like that and then yarning over and then pulling it in. Um, but it can be difficult. It definitely can be. It's it's easier just to like get as close as you can to it on the inside. Okay, so now we are at just about the end of our round. And you're going to see that it's going to line up. We're going to get to wherever the end of that round is. And we're going to do a slip stitch into the same stitch. Or we can just start going like we can we could just start going up from here. Um, yeah, in fact, you know what? Let's do that. Let's go one stitch over, let's get into this one right here. Redo this slip stitch. Let's see what I did on this long one. I think I stopped, yeah. So see what I did for this one is I, I gave it a little bit of space in between each of the rounds instead of going straight to it and then going up, straight to it and then going up. Um, I tried to give a little space in between the, them so they kind of go up. And this is what I really like. This is the design that I, I ended up really digging this look. It kind of looked like a, a road or something. It just made it look so interesting to me. So that's what we're going to replicate here. So a few stitches before the end of the round. Now we want to start going up. We want to go up a few rounds. One, let's go up. I think we need three total. Two, let's see. Yeah, we need one more. One more round up. Let's 
go right here, get our yarn, and three. And then we're gonna just start going to the, going back around it. So I went up a few, few rounds, and then now I'm gonna start just going around and keeping this stripe going. Now this is why I don't really like using this technique to go to do stripes all the way up the hat because it just gets more and more difficult every round you go. But you totally can. Like it it's not like impossible. It's just more easy to do a few rounds of these and then maybe do a little bit of detail along the hat in different ways. Or you could try doing stripes vertically instead. Instead of doing horizontal stripes like this, maybe you could do stripes that go up and then down, up, down, up, down, make zigzags or something. There's so many different ways you can customize this. Um, but this is just one of them. So you see how our stripes are starting to form. Okay, so that's gonna be how to add stripes. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and finish up these stripes right now. Let me just do, let's do one more slip stitch. I'm gonna get to the very end where the stripes connect, like this. I'm just gonna connect the stripes. I think that's probably good for me. I, I'm only going to do three stripes and then I'll cut the yarn and pull it all the way through. And then we can take this end, add it to our darning needle here. And then we're going to go through the inside right here. Like that. And then with this other tail end here, we can either just double knot these two together or we can hide the ends in into the uh, inside of the stitches here we can hide these ends in instead of doing double knots actually let's let's get it at least get it a little closer so I'm just gonna go in through the back of some of these stitches here just kind of hiding it along getting it a little bit closer to our other end so that it's just a few stitches away and then double knotting together do a double knot here one and there's two okay all right so there's a double knot now the next thing I want to show you is how to make a pom-pom for the top of your um, your party hat if you want to add a little pom-pom at the top now this can be uh, this can be a little bit tricky but it's kind of fun to know how to do pom-poms without an actual pom-pom maker it is a lot easier to make pom-poms if you have a pom-pom maker they basically look like little plastic things that you like fold open and then you wind around the plastic things I don't currently have one with me actually wait you know what maybe I do let me look real quick Okay, so I couldn't find my little itty bitty pom pom maker, which would be nice, but that's okay. I did find a larger pom pom maker that shows you what they look like if you want to find them in stores. They basically look like this. You pull these open and then you wind around these pom pom makers and you close them. You wind around this one and close it. And then you go around the inside here and you pull tight and then you, um, you cut it along the, or actually you cut it and then you pull it. You do a stripe and pull it tight. Um, that's how these little pom-pom makers work, but we're gonna do it without that at all. We're only gonna be using our fingers for these pom-poms, which is a little bit more difficult, but you know what? Well, I, I, I don't know if it's necessarily more difficult, but it is a little bit more crafty, which I like. So what you wanna do for that is you wanna take your fingers, just like how we did um, the little mini ball for the top. You wanna take your index fingers, hold it down with the, like do a little peace sign, and put your thumb in between it with your yarn held down in between and keep your thumb in between your index fingers and just start going around your index fingers a bunch. Like go like really as many times as you want. The more times you do this, the thicker your pom-pom will be. So we're gonna go around like, don't, don't hurt your hands, but that's probably pretty good. Yeah, I like that. Okay. So then after you've done that, what you wanna do is you wanna take your crochet hook and go in through the gap between your hands there and take your uh, the yarn, wrap it around the crochet hook and hook it and pull it through your fingers. And then take this end, go around 
the center and then do it again like that you can do this a couple times if you want you could do it like another time but when you go through you want to pull it really tight and then with this end we're going to try to do the same thing the other way around so we're going to go through uh, around that way and around this way and basically what we're trying to do is create a knot to pull this these loops really tight so like this like this just like that okay and then we want to take these two ends we can actually pull it off of our fingers now just be very very careful as you pull it off your fingers not to have it unravel and then you want to take these two ends and double knot them really tightly so we'll go one like that pull it nice and tight i'll do it again pulling it nice and tight Okay, so now you have this weird little loopy thing, right? Make sure to keep these two ends intact and, and tracked because we do not want to accidentally cut these, but we do want to cut all these loops on the inside. So the easiest thing here is to use a, maybe a better pair of scissors than the ones I'm about to use, but something a little bit bigger. And we want to cut all these loops along in the inside. So we want to find the inside of the loops here, just cut them all. And the double knotting there, on the uh, with these these two end loops should keep all of these intact and not like loose and like flying around but you want to make sure that you cut all the loops like that you're gonna have a really silly looking pom-pom in a second we're gonna trim it down okay keep going down let's see make sure I didn't miss any loops oh, got a couple there I missed Okay, I think that's pretty good. Now we have like a pretty messy pom-pom. This would work, I suppose, but we want to trim it down. So what we're going to do is we're going to just take our scissors here and we're just going to trim the, I like to trim the bottom of it first. And we just want to kind of like hedge trim this so that it looks more like a circle. So I start by trimming the bottom of it a bit and then I trim up the sides. I try to make sure all the ends are are nice and trimmed there. Just keep trimming up the sides here. Like that. Almost done. Just keep. And then like just fuzz, like, you know, knock it around a bit. Find any like pieces that are longer than they should be. To trim like that. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Okay, so now we have this little bitty pom pom, and the more that you like toss it, the more you mess it about, the more that the threads are gonna get like um, split and make it look more and more pom pom y. So you can see it's getting more pom pom y. See all these little fuzzies flying around. Looks like we got one long, a couple long pieces right there that I just want to trim up. But there we go. Okay, so now we have this little pom-pom. And we could take this and just sew it onto the top of our party hat here. Let's go ahead and push those little fuzzies out of the way. Go ahead and we can use those for stuffing later. So I'm going to put that aside with my stuffing and I can use that. But we can take these two long ends here and sew it into our hat. Nice and easy, actually. It's really not too tough to do. You just wanna take one of the ends here, sew it in through the top of your hat. Um, and you can just come out through the center, but actually what's even easier is you can come out through a an adjacent stitch. You can come out through somewhere nice and close like that. And then take this other end, um, which is way longer than we needed it, thread that end, on our needle and we can come down through an adjacent stitch from that top one so like let's go like right here maybe and come out through where you came out with that other loop here like that pull it nice and tight now you want to pull both of these ends really tight and double knot this nice and tight so just one just try not to break your yarn but we want to 
make sure it's really tight on there. Two, then we can cut it really nice and close like that. Then take our darning needle and push that little knot back into the piece there. And then there we go. We have a little tiny party hat with a little tiny pom-pom. So the last things that you could do is we could add little stars to it. Um, I have a full video where I explain how to make little miniature stars, which are really useful for sewing onto this. So I'll link that right here or at the end of this video. Um, but yeah, you could add little dots, you could add stars, you could do horizontal stripes, really whatever you want to make another little party hat. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video and... Uh, please like it down below, subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to help support this channel, um, consider becoming a Club Crochet member. Members get early access to future videos just like this one. They get access to an exclusive content. I've got so many different patterns on the website for um, Club Crochet members, including there's this new long turkey pattern with this pilgrim hat. Um, there's a bunch of these burbs. These are my favorite is the burbs. Um, but I have a whole whole series of, of different kinds of patterns. We've got little like... Let's see, we got we got a little a little pumpkin cat. Let's see what else we got. We got oh, this one's great. We got I call him Yancy the Yeti. Just a bunch of patterns just like this all at the website clubcrochet.com. I'll put links in the description. Um but yeah, please like this video, support this channel. I've got kits available as well and uh, a bunch of them are for sale including all these burb kits. If you'd like to learn how to make this pigeon, that you could sew your little tiny hat on. Um, this pattern is actually free. Uh, you can find it at clubcrochet.com slash pigeon. And I'll also put links uh, at the end of this video for that as well. So yeah, thank you so much again for watching. Pasta La Pizza. Let me know if you got any questions in the comments. And uh, yeah, happy hooking. Bye. Bye.